I'm pondering the ponytail. He's pondering the ponytail. In three, two, one, welcome back. Another episode. Hope you enjoyed the last one. I'm loving the shirt. Thank you, sir. Thank you, good sir. This is my uh, snakeskin motif inspired from and by a film that I watched on the telly last night. David Lynch masterpiece, underrated, should be discussed on the Pondering Ponytail in a future episode, starring Nick Cage, called Wild at Heart. Wild at Heart. Where he plays a sort of... Underrated. Out- it's highly rated. It's, nobody knows about it. Well, people who know, know. Our subscribers definitely know. Lukewarm business at the box office, incidentally. But nevertheless, I decided to wear it in celebration of... Okay. 875 views on our Miami Vice uh, upload. Not great. I am very happy with this and 37 comments and growing and almost 100 subscribers, by the way. I mean, All legitimate. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, but we're not here to talk about Nicolas Cage or no, Wild no, at no, Heart. No, no. We are here to talk about one of the coolest, I would say, one of the coolest actors that has ever graced the silver screen. Used to be. Indeed. And that person is... Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Now, allow me, allow me to try and introduce this man. Fine. Was he the next Brando? James Dean reborn, a rebel with a cause for stray dogs and IRA splinter groups, or merely an overrated, overhyped, run-of-the-mill actor whose fame and star flickered as the 80s gave way to the 90s and respectable filmmaking gave way to over-the-hill boxing, domestic abuse allegations. You're getting quite good at this. Thank you. <laughs> and and um, an eventual return to uh, D-list action films starring Jean-Claude Van Damme, one of my favorites, by the way, called Double Team. Okay. And an eventual renaissance in the late 2000s when he was finally Oscar nominated. Yes, yes, yes. For and The yes. Wrestler. So basically... The evolution of Mickey Rourke. That's what we're talking about today. An actor we both love. We love. I love him. Okay. Now, right. why do you love him is the question. We'll get into that. <sighs> but first, kick us off. Early years. Early years Mickey Rourke, right? Yeah. Makes his debut essentially... Now, hold in on. Lord- Let me yes. stop you there. I know you're going to get into this. Yes. But he started off... He was quite... I mean, he was quite destitute. Comes from a very poor background. Correct. Starts off in boxing. Yes. Happens to get into acting on a whim to replace or replace an actor who fell out of a stage play that his film uh, that his friend was directing. He s- steps in. He loves it. Go ahead. Good notes. Thank you. Very good notes. By I'm the way, I'm getting better at this too. Very very good <laughs> notes. Grew up in Miami. Sure. Okay. Um, anyway, he makes his debut basically his proper film debut yep. in one of the great erotic thrillers of the 80s Body Heat Body Heat which yes. Lawrence Kasdan directed right. very critically Kathleen Turner Kathleen Turner who like, and, and William Hurt and William Hurt a great film by the way Richard Crenna of Rambo fame <laughs> and Rambo 3 fame as well by hey. the way okay and even better he, he emerged in that film in a cameo role playing this kind of arsonist character yeah okay and received mad reviews for yes. his like star turn right albeit small um, and of course the comparisons with Dean and Brando sure. emerged and I don't know if you know about this but he Go was on. part of the actor studio our favorite oh okay. Mr. Lipton's Mr. Actors, Lipton's actor studio, actor studio yes. where he apparently yeah. gave and I quote Go on. the greatest audition ever I've read that yes I read that I mean okay. I like to think you know other actors have done them <coughs> Alex Caspian but anyway but hey we'll get to that point Anyway, so yes, so Body Heat, he breaks out. Everybody's suddenly talking about this young kid who, as you say, is the next Brando, the next James Dean, the next XYZ, Messi, whatever. You know what I'm saying. And channeled many of those characteristics of the bad boy kind of enfant terrible, right? Yeah. Of Brando and James Dean from yesteryear. So the kind of biker and denim jacket look, bouffant hair, right? Like an earring, this kind of like off-screen persona. Exactly. That was kind of mirrored on his, in his, in in his, well, uh, certainly in Body Heat. Yeah. Okay. So from and then, that, and, like, and, and a litany g- of films follow, right? Well, actually, to be honest with you, he had a cameo in uh, Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate. Sure. The greatest box office flop of all times. But, but my point is that his career kicks off. His career kicks off. So now he's making the films. So, absolutely. And what has he got? You've got Diner in 1982. People love that film. I haven't seen I that I love film. that film. I haven't seen it. Barry Levinson directs. Important to note the critically acclaimed directors with whom he was collaborating through the 80s. That's a very, very important footnote, incidentally. Absolutely. Barry Levinson. Rough Riders. 
Go on. <laughs> Sound at thing department? Didn't know about Don't this. worry, just get on with it. Anyway, Barry Levinson, like, who, who actually, like, directed Rain Sound Man. Department. And, and, uh, Sound department's right here, bro. <laughs> All right, anyways. This guy. So, uh, what was uh, what was Diner? It was essentially a... Uh, uh, it was just a you know, period piece. Exactly. With with you know what I, I always think of with that cast, which included the great Steve Gutenberg. The great, great Steve Gutenberg. By the way, our love for Steve our Gutenberg. St our love for Steve Gutenberg. Growing. If you don't Can follow you just him, tell audiences why? If you don't follow him on social media, yeah. follow him. You will realize he will lift your day, lift your spirits, and warm your hearts. Absolutely. Say no more. Continue. <laughs> Tim Daly. Tim Daly, who you don't know yeah. him. Paul Reiser. Know. Yes, Paul Reiser. Mickey Rourke, obviously. Ellen Varkin. Okay, fine. So this film's about basically friends and for like a fraternal, yeah, uh, you know, um, uh, community of friends in the set in the fifties, for and which again Rourke receives great notices. Film is does lukewarm box office. Actually had middling reviews. To be honest with you, which would become a theme throughout the eighties with yeah. Rourke. Incidentally. However, his his uh, portrayal and his role is always highly acclaimed. Always. Even though the films don't yeah. do well, they everybody always like rates Rourke and Correct. his performances, Correct. right? So he goes on to make other films. You know what that's called? Star power. Sure. Something you, as an aspiring actor, should, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Try and, you know. I know, I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah. It's yeah. not happening. A new, haircut, you, a new haircut? Okay, fine, yes, you're right. You're, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You know? Okay, just go on. Okay, okay so anyways, and then we follow up with Rumblefish, which is directed by Coppola, yeah. who's coming off, I mean, only a few years before Apocalypse yeah. Now, which was... And who does he play? This motorcycle boy. Yeah, motorcycle, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the coolest character name of all time, right? Yeah, I agree with that. And Rumblefish is very critically acclaimed. Yeah. Not a great box office film. Again, not a great box office. But I actually think that Rourke being that kind of rebellious, Method kind of actor. iconoclastic, yeah. against the grain kind of actor, yeah. probably would have enjoyed being heralded for his performances in these not particularly mainstream productions. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what like Brando would have been proud of, right? And these the, the people, you know, against you know he, he was being juxtaposed against. Okay, yeah. so he's making all these films. He's rising through the ranks. He's rising through the you ranks. Know, people are loving his acting. Yeah. You know, the critics, Ebert's giving him the thumbs up right, left and center. Yeah. And then he makes what is his probably kind of main standout film, which brings him international acclaim. This is a film that I dearly, dearly love and have loved ever since I was pubescent. The great, the underrated, the masterpiece that is nine and a half weeks. Nine and a half weeks. Now this film, again, it deserves it deserves its own showcase, by the way. But we'll have to do that in another episode. Yes, absolutely. Now this film, now again, probably didn't do so well. It didn't do well in the states, I think, because internationally, it was, because it was a bit sexy. Yeah, it was a bit erotic, so they censored it hard. But so I guess you know, going into that film, since that's a big part of it, it didn't do so well. However, it didn't that the censorship didn't happen internationally, and. Thus, did very well. I have to say, yeah, because it's dealing with kind of sadomasoch sadomasochistic themes, uh, degrading of women, and so on and so well, forth. Well, sure, that's a matter of opinion, but yes, I okay, think, fine. I, I mean, Im imagine in today's climate, yeah, yeah, how yeah, that yeah. would be received. Yeah. Um, but it was the original 30-year prior Fifty Shades of Grey. No, Fifty, Shade, Gr Fifty Shades of Grey basically ripped it off. Absolutely. You know? I mean, the character's name is actually John Grey. There you go. I mean, talk about like yeah. a, a rip-off. But that film, and I think it deserves a little bit of um, Who's in attention. It? Kim Basinger. Yes. Looking good. The most beautiful uh, siren of the 80s. Yes. And of course, Rourke. Now, w you love this film as well. I know I, you, love, I love this listen, film. Listen, I love, love this film. Go on, tell, not, give it away. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not like an amazing film. It's not like a must-see, but the style of it for me is really what sticks out. I mean, he even has those little like details that then have been like copied and referenced time and time again. I mean, let's not even talk about the fridge scene. That's been like referenced to death. But even the things where he like his wardrobe with like, 20 shirts exactly all the white. same color all new yeah. his like all his clothes exactly the same all of that kind of stuff and just like his manner and the music and the Amazing style music. of it it's 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 really like you know people are like still like copying it to uh, this day uh, and, and you it's, know it's like influenced so much you know we talked in a previous episode yeah. about how um uh the cityscape in the film heat mm. was a you know a you mm. know a key principal actor in yes, the film itself a character i yeah. think 
New York. I think it, was, it must have been shot in the autumn months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. whole film is it's like amazing. hues of gray. Yeah, w- with don't get New me York wrong. The story skyline. is not it's but, incredible, but like the well, film it's actually, itself. It's actually, it actually doesn't have much of a storyline. Yeah. Okay, but it's a film of it's a style over substance film. Right, it's like one of the How many days is nine and a half weeks? Um, Can you figure that out? Two months and one week. Okay, well, regardless. <laughs> anyways, anyways, how he looked. The reason and how I she asked looked, that, I'm like, wonder if 500 days. Uh, because like, the na- relationships, uh, relationship lasts nine and a half weeks, right? Yeah, Between that's them, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you have film subsequently, even the title, like, what is that film? 500 Days of Summer. Also, like, you know, the period in which a relationship lasts. Six Days, Seven Nights, starring Harrison Ford and Anne Hesch. Bosch. The late Anne Hesch. He boshed it. Yeah. He boshed it. You like that one? Yes, I did. Yeah, great romance. So listen, film, yeah. this guy, let's get back to it. Mickey Rourke is basically got the world at his feet. However... And by the way, just because we always have to ask this, did you want to be him in nine and a half weeks? <laughs> sure. Anyway. Zenia Suits. Okay. Brian Ferry soundtrack. Yes. Right. And that one, and, there's a song and at, his the, apartment. at the fridge. I like bread and butter. butter. You like toast and jam. There you go. Lots of good songs. Yeah, lots Luba, of... let it go. Okay. Let it go. Let it free your body. Is let it film? move and you go. Is yes, that, of course. Oh, wow. It's in the, in the closing credits. Jesus. You should know these hold things. On, hold on, hold Mr. on. Mr. Caspian. Hold on. That, that reminds me of something. Before and we go any further. Eyes, before we go any further. Yeah. I need to come clean as a journalist. Yes. We need to be ethical and objective about this. And we le- need to let the audience know that we're actually friends with Mickey Rourke. Oh. And when I say friends, I mean we met him. Yes. And when I say we met him, I didn't even meet him. I wasn't there. But my friends met him. Okay. Well, you're not there. No, I had left because oh. my shoe broke and my belt broke. It was one of those nights. Don't get me wrong. Anyway, our boy, Hashi Poorly Pormund, okay, yeah. was having a night in the Wellington Club up the road, right? And who walks in at about 2 a.m.? Mr. Rourke. Mr. Rourke himself. And he is as cool AF. You know what I yes. mean? With all the boys, taking shots, doing it up. What year? Uh, this was 2000 and... Hmm. Listen, Seven, there eight, are receipts... There are receipts. And they're photos. Proof. And they're, yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean when I, he's not down with the kids, this one. Anyway, one of them is getting married. Yeah. Who's getting married? <laughs> then. Okay, one of them. <laughs> anyway, pet, I don't know. Better anyway, left unsaid. Better left unsaid. Anyway, and so we go, Mr. Rourke, Mickey, yo, Mick, what's your advice? And what does he say? Don't get married. That's our boy. That's our boy, Rourke. Now, okay. As it happens, <laughs> you actually got married recently. No, but he didn't say that to me. I wasn't there. No. I told you I left in a state. I was there, and maybe okay. that explains my uh, yes. existing state okay. of state Okay, anyway. Of anyway. So oh, we're... So, so, we're so, 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 just, just, just to put that out there so you understand that, you know, we are true journalists in every sense of the world. Mickey, okay. if you're watching, we need a sponsor. Hey, we need you back. We need you back. Anyway, okay, okay so anyways. nine and a half weeks, world at his feet. However, he's not that breakout star yet. He's not a household name. Yeah, yeah. Although the reason for that, I would say, is he doesn't pick the films that are blockbusters. No. He likes to keep it artistic. Ah, uh, yes. He likes I know where to you're going maintain with this. his integrity. I know where you're going with because this. Because when he hit Nine and a Half Weeks and he Around did rise, time. what was he offered? Well, he was offered, amongst other films, he was actually offered, by the way, 48 Hours, the Nick Nolte role, which actually was three years prior. Okay. Now, I think he would have nailed that role mm-hmm. because, the, you know, how did Nolte play that? He's this kind of gritty grizzled cop yeah. right Rourke could have played that co- character quite well along with Eddie Murphy okay we've got astonishingly one of my favourite films of all time Rain Man he would have played the Tom Cruise role that was directed by Barry Levinson okay one best picture and it was the highest grossing film of 1988 so imagine if he had like struck gold with that mm-hmm. although it might have been a very different film with him in it right I'm sure all of these films would have been and who knows they could have been flops it, <sighs> hindsight is 50 how about 50? The Untouchables playing the Kevin Costner lead but of Elliot Ness. But the main one, the main role he turned down, your favorite. Which was? Not mine. Which one? Top Gun. No, he did. Oh, no, 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 no. It wasn't actually, it wasn't actually the Maverick role. There was a I'm role not saying in it Top was. Gun. Did I say oh, that? Okay, no, I didn't say that. I just okay. said he turned down a oh, role in Top Gun. He turned down a role in Top yeah. Gun. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Do you know what um, I mean? But um, anyways, it would have been interesting to see how. So yeah, he makes bad, you know, yo, Mickey, change your agent. Why don't you take these films? And what is he doing in place of that? Um, nine and a half weeks notwithstanding, Year of the Dragon, directed again by Michael Cimino, yeah. which is a very, very uh, uneven film. I don't know if you've seen it. No. Where he plays this captain uh, in New York trying to take down the uh, the triads. Um, some good bits in it, some not so great bits in it. His performance is a bit uneven. They give him this weird kind of like salt and pepper uh, hairdo, which I didn't really get, or the gunmetal frosting for our uh, 
finally. Hair dye. Finally. Uh, or, Gone you know, uh, metal frosting. Gone metal okay. frosting. All right, so um, basically... So middle, and, but then, th then I have to say, in 87 or 88, Angel Heart. Right. Opposite De Niro. His hero, by the way, is De Niro. S directed by Alan Parker, who's one of the great directors of the 70s and 80s. And so he's very happy to work on this film. Yeah. He can't wait to hang out with De Niro. He can't wait to learn from De Niro. But what happens... To do a crazy sex scene with Lisa Bonet. Hold on. Oh, at the time, call okay. the show. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm... Anyway, so he can't wait to hang out with De Niro. But what happens? De Niro tells him to do one, mate. I'm gonna stay in character. We are not gonna even interact. I'm not gonna even shake your hand. This rubs Mickey the wrong way and soon they fall out and hate each other. And Alan Parker said it was a nightmare working with him as well. Yes. But incidentally, I would like to... I would, this is very important before we go into the next phase of Mickey's career. Yes. Which is Adrian Lyon, the director of Nine and a Half Weeks, who authored also some of the other great erotic dramas and thrillers he loves an of, erotic drama over the time including fatal attraction uh indecent proposal and unfaithful yes said that if mickey had died after angel heart yeah he would have been bigger than james dean okay why does that matter why it doesn't eulogy? no it does it doesn't matter oh, okay. but what's interesting is you like this one since De Niro hated Rourke so much, because he obviously, like you said, he, you know, the director didn't like him either. He yeah. wouldn't show up on yeah. time, blah, blah, blah. You know, very unprofessional. Apparently, Scorsese was supposed to offer him a role in your favorite film, The Irishman, <laughs> but De Niro said, nope, nope to Mickey. <laughs> well, by the way, he should consider himself lucky that he sidestepped that landmine, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> All right. So, in, then in listen. Case, so then, listen. Case, you're coming to the end of the '80s yeah, now, yeah. and so his career is in limbo. Well, he was like on the rise, but, but and then it suddenly plateaus. But I, and from, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. No, what? I'm saying it's it's not. He's still. I think he's got. He's, no, he's got credibility. No, in no, 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 no. For all the potential he had, for all the hype surrounding him, he doesn't become a big star. Not a big star, but he is a respected star. He's Respected just not a big... by who? By critics, not yeah, by, by critics. audiences. Yes. Incidentally, you know I, mean? I think important to ju important to juxtapose this, that another actor who was on the rise around the same period, but would go on to essentially, I want to say, transition out of making these either art house or critically acclaimed, but maybe commercially I'm underwhelming Keep going. film, was Sean Penn, who around that time was doing films in the Mickey Rourke vein, like Colors, like At Close Range, like, was it Shanghai Surprise or Shanghai? Yeah, Express? I think, I think Shanghai, Shanghai Sur Surprise. Was there a surprise? I, I don't remember. I okay. Know. Shanghai Panda, for all I know. Yeah, anyway, you, you like that film, so listen, from what I remember. So listen, yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, as much as you love Mickey, listen, his freaking career takes a dive. So, for, so much so that he goes back to what he started doing, which is? You have just overlooked the two great films go on Let's before he goes into what you're about to talk about wild orchid and crap and harley davidson marlboro man amazing masterpiece but considered crap but let me just say this because i i, I owe it would the, to would myself. the harley davidson come off uh, come before the boxing yes okay the year before okay but i have to A say year, same so thing. so so basic on johnny handsome as well those are three All important right. films johnny handsome where he's playing this disfigured uh, criminal at the start whose face is kind of mangled and then he gets betrayed and left for dead by his gang and this expert surgeon basically reconstructs his face to look like Mickey Rourke at his you know prime yeah. essentially and they don't recognize him the gang yeah. which is a little bit of foreshadowing in reverse if I'm not mistaken did I get that correct? I think so because Mickey would then in subsequent years take his beautiful face and then rearrange it and kind of well, mang mangle it yeah okay Anyways, good film, by the way. Yes. Directed by Walter Hill, one of the great action oh, Wild helmers. Orchid. Shut Johnny up. Handsome. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. Wild Orchid, okay, was the Zalman King directed, the guy who did Red Shoe Diaries, the kind of soft You know what? Director. Sometimes you can research too much. All right. I'm Sometimes just, that I'm just going to say why it's important much. to mention Wild Orchid, because I have watched that film so many times, it's my guilty pleasure. And even though it is a it's a, a terrible, terrible... We don't want to hear about what you do at home <laughs> alone at night, all right? We don't want to hear about that, but go ahead. No one, no one embodied the cool, sleazy look better than Mickey Rock in that film. I mean, he was basically wearing a suit without anything underneath it with crazy, crazy Hawaiian tropic olive tan, okay? The hair slicked back what with color? the gel in it. What? The hair. Chestnut, okay? Wayfarers, 
a a um uh the watch was the ebel the gold ebel okay which was also sported in miami vice which i i actually tried to buy recently. follow watch record but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but i follow watch record but, uh, but, but then when i tried it on i'm like it's not as cool today as it was in 1989 1990 but my god roar i mean if you want to just see an expose of pimpness and coolness slick sleaze watch wild orchid and he was playing alongside his soon-to-be wife carrie otis which we will talk about uh who with whom he had a very very turbulent and fractious relationship all right we need to like speed things up here bro okay and harley davidson marlboro man which we which love is, which uh, we'll uh, do another video about at a later time which is the modern day butch class in the sundance kid starring don johnson as well so it's a, a film very close to my heart and his anyways uh, give it away boxing career okay, so then phase two the, so then like the, the he's career, ashamed of himself the acting is not self-destruct go, the acting is not going anywhere and by the way he like i said he doesn't want to do the blockbuster films the films he does choose to do don't really go anywhere i mean you know they have a little bit of a cult following so he says guess what you know what i'm gonna go back to my first love my first love is boxing so i'm going back to it he He's a light heavyweight. He does pretty well. What was his record? Six wins, zero losses, and two draws. Okay, so he has six, seven, eight fights, right? He has eight fights. Not bad. Not bad, but he gets his face beaten up. What and was he, I light, think, light middleweight, light heavyweight? I think light heavyweight. Okay. He, he I don't know. I might, yeah, <laughs> light heavyweight. I don't know. Don't quote me. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> And I think like a lot of the refs in the boxing ring kind of give him the decision because he's Mickey Rourke. So, you know, and you need to like, you need like, you know, boxing, it ain't, it ain't easy. Man. No, it ain't easy. Getting punched in the face ain't easy. So after getting punched in the face for eight fights, he decides, you know what? Let me go back to the broken so nose, broken toe, broken toe, a split tongue and a compressed cheekbone, according to my extensive research. So he goes back to the filmmaking. Yeah. And it ain't good. And it ain't good. At this point, Hollywood has basically blacklisted him. Directors don't want to work with him. Co-stars don't want to work with him. He's basically persona non grata. Right. Right. So what is what are the films he's making? Well, uh, some low budget crap. Two films B that movies. are two films that are probably break my top ten again. Oh, he loves them, obviously. A shout out to Double Team, Bloody alongside Jean Claude Van Damme I mean, and Dennis Rodman making his acting debut. A masterpiece, an underrated masterpiece. Um, okay, okay, what else? Did you not like Double Team? I mean, I don't think I've ever seen Double Team. Great film. All oh, right. And great action I'm film. Sure. In the climactic scene, he's basically having a showdown with Jean-Claude Van Damme, who's the, the hero, in like, the, like a Roman Colosseum, which is basically like littered with landmines all over it. Okay, that when if you step on, you blow up. Okay. Okay. A baby is in the middle, which is Jean-Claude Van Damme's baby, that he has to rescue with all these landmines surrounding it in the Roman Colosseum. And then, and then, a tiger comes out and starts attacking. Okay. Okay, this is, this great. is great directing. Scorsese, Coppola, yes. Uh, yes. Walter Hill. Yes. Uh, who are the other directors? Barry Levinson, take note. I don't know who directed it. But Cinema it's a Verite, it's, it's, it ain't. It's a, it's, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> all right, listen, let me it's tell you something for nothing. And at this point, we have to, like, you know... Uh, kind of uh, note that he is no more this young sleek sort of you know uh, ingenue as if you will yeah, it's fine. he's more of like a heavy built beat up kind of guy and so he's yeah. taking on those kind of roles he's also starting to jack up as well during yeah. this period right? on the juice perhaps perhaps <laughs> but not a very good body by the way I have to say for All people right. like myself and Alex who like are into bodybuilding he could have done better on this and then and then another film that I was so excited about Another nine and a half weeks. And a terrible straight to video, low budget okay. uh, disgrace so listen, of and a follow-up. His face is getting crazy, yeah. his hair is getting crazy, he's got tattoos, he's like being tattoos weird. not yet, but yeah, coming there, yeah. Uh, you know, he's on the road. Yeah, okay. Okay, he's just okay, basically yeah. like a burnout. Yeah. Okay, so listen, we're in like phase two. So we had phase one, the young up and coming actor. Now we're into phase two, like the burned out beefcake playing the like the henchman heavy roles right yeah and then stallone by the way he's made this he's he's actually referenced this many times that he was broke he could basically couldn't even pay for his rent but he still had his dog loki which he loved she, dearly right what, what, what kind of dog i don't know it isn't like he likes the little chihuahua yeah, yeah, dogs yeah 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 Alizan, okay. like the bunny, the worst. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Anyways, whatever. He used to take it on to like Letterman and these other talk okay. shows and talk about it. And then Stallone, apparently, as he says, he says, yo, I need someone like, yo, you know, you're still looking good. I need someone to look like and kick my ass. And uh, Mickey basically said, yeah, yeah, I can do it. He's like, yo, I'll cover your rent, you know, blah, blah, blah. I think Mickey was uninsured at this point. Stallone offered to pay actually for, um, for, for, his, for the work. 
which to which Mickey was very very proud and um, and very appreciative. Sorry about that. Sorry, 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 folks. Sorry, oh, sorry, that was Mighty. my fault. Okay. Anyways, that was the Get Carter remake. Okay. Anyway, let's a movie you liked? No. <laughs> anyway, so listen, he's making all. Still wearing good hair dye in that movie. So the suit now phase three, the resurrection of Raw. <laughs> Our boy. I don't know how it comes about. Why don't you tell us? Darren Aronofsky. Darren Aronofsky. Aronofsky. Damn. No more pints for me. Darren Aronofsky, the director of The Fountain. Yes. Uh, Requiem for a Dream. Uh, Mother. I mean, all these crazy out there films. Good knowledge. Thank you. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So these like amazing films. Um, he comes up to Rourke and says, "What?" Well, I don't exactly know what he said, but he's like. Can you uh, pretend? Well, I don't know. How does Aronofsky speak? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I don't know. Okay, I was going to say, like, hey, Mickey, uh, would you like to be in the movie called The Wrestler about this over-the-hill, beat-up, face-mangled wrestler who's still trying to kind of, like, stay relevant to pay the bills, which was an almost, I would say, autobiographical, uh, you know... Um, Kind of, yeah, it? it's kind of like it's kind of sh like a, a parallel to his own life. Exactly, it's yeah. almost like life imitating art. An art imitating life. Voila. Art imitating. Yes, you're right. Okay. Sorry, anyway, go so 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 he makes the wrestler, and suddenly we achieve what we've always dreamed about, Mickey. You are a big awards, star. Golden awards, Globes, awards, Oscar he's, nominations. He's made it. He's finally made it, and he's made it in an art house independent That's film, right. doing what he wants to do, not selling out, and bang. He's much nicer to dream talk and goal hosts. achieved. But what happens when you dream, when you achieve a goal? When you achieve you a dream? You score another goal? No, you realize it ain't that big a deal. Ah, you think so? Well, listen, yes. let's just also say that, like, I think he was unfairly passed over for the Academy Award. He was the red hot favorite going into award season. He had won a slew of awards in the build up to the Academy Awards. And then they gave it to Sean Penn for Milk, which I thought was a little bit of a. Well, that's what happens. But, like, forget the Academy Awards there. It's like, it's, it's, it's a, never based on merit, it's always based on networking and who they like. So, screw that. We all know Rourke was the one. Right. And Sean Penn actually mentioned him and championed him in his speech. Do you remember that? Yeah. He said uh, something at the end of his speech that um, my friend Mickey Rogue rises from the ashes and he is my brother. Which was a nice uh, shout out. Didn't Mickey, didn't you tell me before that? Yeah, Sean I Penn can't remember. There was, a, there was an actor, I forget his name, guys, but he's, he was the star of Buffalo 66 and the director. Anyway, he said that, like, since, you know, he knew both of these actors, that Sean Penn he just wanted to be Mickey Rourke. That's all he wanted to be. Anyway, besides the point. And going back to my, you know, when you like achieve your dream and it's never uh, cracked out uh, what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. It never lives up to the expectation. Well, that's what happened, I think, because it's after that he goes and starts making like these blockbuster films. The thing he avoided his whole career. He made a film, Iron Man 2, massive blockbuster film, right? I mean, not a massive one, but a blockbuster film. Expendables. Expendables, all of these sudden, like these like cheap popcorn movies, things he's been avoiding his whole career. Why, Mickey? Why'd you do it? Because he has to pay the bills. <laughs> Fine. You realize it's the most important like, thing. Okay, yeah. But you're going to vote Labour. Or no, Green. I'm, I'm green, oh, you're voting green. I'm, yeah, I'm okay. part of the party, by the way. I'm a Are member. you really? Yeah. Well done. Well done. Kind You're of a man of great integrity. <laughs> yeah, okay, go on. Yeah, anyway, so that's it. So that's it. So, you know, he finally gets it. And where is he now? Well, okay, now we need to talk about how he's been in recent times. The evolution, the physical evolution. Okay, like the physical evolution. I think this is very, very important we talk about this. Yes. Okay, so like in the 80s. But let's, like, how would let's you make it quick because, you know, it's already been like 25, like. You're right, and England are going to play a meaningless game in about three hours. All right, go ahead. Anyway. So yeah, what does he go from? Basically, in the '80s, yeah. he's he's basically the uh, the reincarnation or the uh, the James Dean Marlon Brando yeah, kind of if, love, if, love if, child. Exactly. Right. So he's like good looking. He's hot. The girls love him. Everybody loves him. You know. Bad he's boy. Cool, he's slick. He's a bad boy. Blah 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 blah. Then in the '90s. Then after the boxing, his face is messed he's, up. He's Plastic so, surgery comes still, into it. He's probably had a few concussions. Do you know what I mean? He's still actually, and I actually did a year by year examination still looked okay even okay. well into the 90s by okay. the way so, so then what off. changed well first of all i don't know what happened to the hair yeah but there is some crazy hair work going on here 
I mean, I would like to know. I would like an expert. Uh, what do you call them? Um, what do you call a hair doctor? Uh, trichologist. Trichologist. I would like an expert trichologist to let me know what's going on with the hair. What do you think is going on with the hair? I don't know, man. Maybe it's just falling out. And instead of getting the plugs, he got the wigs. But it's it's the a system. But it's a crazy one. Yeah, it's a crazy one. Anyway, man, Mickey. And, and there are, is, there this are is like the beauty of the Mickey. This is the beauty of him, right? Go this on. This is the beauty of him. You never know. You know, he's just an extremist. He's a poet. A maverick. A renaissance man. A renaissance man. As comfortable with the pen as he is with the sword. That's exactly. the definition of a renaissance man. I, you don't need to mansplain. They got it. Okay, thank I, you very Okay, much. I got it. And <laughs> now, now what, what is to come for him? He's now 71. Well, that's it, man. He's done. He's looking crazy. He's got a lot of dogs. He's got his weird style. He's hanging out with that weirdo guy. I don't know who the hell he is, but he's hanging out with that. <laughs> This is, very, 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 this is a very, very vague but this, no, but this uh, explanation is the, but about this, uh, but this is the life of an artist, Mickey, where man. are you now? But this is the life of an artist. You know? I, do you think there is yet another you iteration? Know, I mean, iteration. How you, how, 71. Yeah, no, that's it. He's chilling now. Could he do like the kind of Clint Eastwood in the 2000s phase? When he was playing this, like, you know, like the neighbor everybody wants to avoid, but he comes out like in Gran Torino and he's basically like, got a heart of gold even though everybody thinks he's a racist and you know I mean hey he comes to defense of others what Mickey <laughs> that's the pitch if you want to do it come talk to this guy and I would like to say Mickey if you're watching basically I love you he's I, definitely I, not <laughs> <laughs> go on shut up <laughs> I love you I worship you I modeled myself on you for many many years first nine and a half weeks okay I got into Xenia clothing couture long overcoats white shirts gray suits all right and Buffon hairstyle yeah, 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 and up. in Wild Orchid Basically, this is my homage to Wild Orchid. Great job. <laughs>